Welcome to the A Bit of AI Show with your hosts, Henk and Amy. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the fifth A Bit of AI Show with myself, Henk Woolman, and Amy Boyd. We both work at Microsoft as cloud advocates in the AI space. Hey, Amy, how are you doing today? I am good. I am good. It's fifth episode. Can't believe it already. Uh, we get better every time, which is always nice if our um, connections hold out, hopefully. Um, <laughs> but one of the things I'm excited for today is our guest. Um, we actually go back quite a long time ago now, and it, I'm really excited for her to kind of speak about what she does. So yeah, it should be an exciting show. Perfect. So this show is all about um, people that work in the AI space. We invite every show, we invite different guests from different uh, professions in, in the AI space, from um, pre-sales, consultancy, to um, engineers and data scientists that actually create a deep neural network, and from our DevOps engineers that actually run these things in production. Um, like you said, today we have your good friend, Marta, Marta Rodriguez Martinez, to chat about her life in AI. Um, after that, we will close up with the Learn Challenge of the Week, and I have one fun conference to share for you all. And as always, all the links can be found on our website, a bit of AI.show. Wonderful. And um, just before we forget, as always, after the show, you are welcome to join a bit of AI cafe, which is basically a friendly teams meeting where we can all have a chat um, ourselves, uh, our guests, and you can ask lots of questions. And we actually often share a lot of resources. Um, it's been really, really good for that. Um, different people sharing different perspectives and how they learn and stuff like that. So please join us. It's um, aka.ms slash a bit of AI dash cafe. Nice. So it is time to bring our guest into the show. Hi, Marita. Hello, everyone. Hey, how are you doing? How are you doing? Yeah, not bad, not bad. How are you guys doing? Very good, very good. I always really like your background. It's always so light and airy when we speak. I love the shutters <laughs> and stuff like that. I get I get a lot of um of FOMO as if I'm um, missing out on something. I need to Mine's quite bright and nice. You can't obviously can't see it on this stream, um, but it's. Uh, I do always think it's such a pleasure to speak with you. Um, and I know you're super busy uh, with. Well, you will explain and how important it is for everyone else's learning that you're actually working. So uh, we won't take any more of your time than we need to in some senses. But I guess, Hank, oh, should we get started? Yes, let's do that. Wonderful. So, uh, Marta, the easiest question is always first, tell us who you are uh, and what you do. Yeah, great. And yeah, Amy, I'll have you one time to have a coffee or whatever one that is allowed and you can actually see the space. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm Marta and Hank, I was very impressed by the pronunciation. It's not easy. I've got a very long name and a lot of sets in it. So it makes it really hard for non-Spanish speakers to pronounce. So, yeah. I am the uh, program lead at Multivast, so I um, manage all the data programs here, which, uh, to put it in a nutshell, is um, an apprenticeship provider, but a very quite unconventional approach to it in terms of what we are aiming to do is to create an alternative to traditional ways of education, whether that is education in, at university or more corporate training as we all know it. So that's what um, I do today. And the same is said, I've um, been in the space for quite some time doing um, more traditional business analytics and business intelligence and then transitioning into the world of data science thanks to, well, 
one of the conferences that you run a long time ago. And uh, yeah, that's how I ended up coming into the world of AI. And that's why I'm, I guess, here today. Wonderful. Yeah, I love, I love that we have that connection. And you're one of these people that I just always think I'm like, oh, gosh, like when we speak to people, it really, it does make a difference when you share the things you know, and like people get inspired. And I remember us having a chat. And so yeah, it's it's so amazing to see what you're doing today. And actually, how multiverse is helping everyone else train as well because it was i think from when we chatted it wasn't always the easiest thing right it sometimes felt like there was a huge wall where it was like how do i actually truly get into data science so super super interesting and then our next question is always quite a hard one but i think it tells everyone all of our um watchers all our viewers here kind of what it's really like to work in the space of ai and so I, I know every day is often different in every job, but can you describe what your specific role and then maybe others around you, what it looks like day to day? Like what, what is it that you kind of spend a lot of time on? Yeah, and I guess I, I've been in the job for nearly two years now. And when I started, my job was very different to what I do today. So I joined the team to, um, most of my time was spent as a data coach and a data coach role is quite a specific to my team role which basically um, you spend your day whether facilitating groups delivery sessions on the data program that we have so it's more like what you can think of as classroom time so you spend time with your apprentices teaching them on a group setting whether that is Power BI, Excel, or whether that is Python and the fundamentals of machine learning, that happens in in yeah a more traditional group setting. And then the rest of the time, you do a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions with all of your uh, learners to make sure that they can um, apply the learning to their jobs, and you can coach them on how to best go about doing that and they come to you with your ch their challenges or their work problems or how to manage the conversation with the stakeholders, which is a lot of the time the most complicated part. And what we spend a lot of time doing is coaching them on like how to build that confidence in like that they have the tools to go about doing what they want to do well. And that's a lot of the conversation. And I always keep coming back to the conversations you and I had back in the day where like, as you said, it was a really hard like jump to kind of have to take and say, okay, like I know that I know not all of the things, but I know enough to be able to like take little steps towards the start and applying all of these things and make my job and my team's job more efficient and all of that stuff. So I use a lot of that experience to help others go through that journey and so that was my job and that's what my team mostly does and then as the team grew which when i joined multibus was only a team of two me and another person and now it's a team of nearly 40 people so my job has significantly changed since then so i don't like coach our learners per se that often anymore and i spend most of my time thinking about how to grow the different programs that we um have so we started with um level four qualification which is um the fundamentals of data analytics traditionally speaking plus the fundamentals of data science now we've just launched a higher education program which is the equivalent to a university degree but in apprenticeship format specialized in data science and machine learning and then we are exploring other options to bridge the gap between people that know nothing about data to people that can confidently do the fundamentals of Excel and Power BI and kind of more traditional stuff. So yeah, that's how my my day to day is a lot of meetings, a lot of strategic conversations and a lot of managing people rather than playing around with cool technology. But uh, yeah, that's how the whole journey has evolved. Yeah, and I guess it's so important to have that strategy side of it as well. It, it is a space that is moving so quickly. And it sounds like your team, yourself and your team are kind of moving quickly with it. And for all the viewers out there, I know I would certainly be like, 
where do I get access to this? Now, Marta sent us so many great links. Um, it was like a whole email full of them. And so uh, we will obviously make sure that they are available on our website as well so that people can go out and find a little bit more. Cool. So I am interested, if, if you want to be a trainer, what kind of skill set do you need? Mm -hmm. And it's a great question because, as I said, it's a very niche role. And when you finish university, you never think, of like, oh, I'm going to become a data coach. Like, nobody tells you that's actually an option. So I guess the, fa the most important thing, you have to be very passionate about empowering other people. Like, regardless of whether you're, like, technically super brilliant, like, the really important thing is that you're doing this to help others go on that journey. It, and you're not necessarily in it for yourself and to take your like technical skills to a different level. It's like it's kind of like that role. The, the real kind of magic happens when you're able to have that connection and that facilitator role of someone else's experience. So that's like like the number one thing that someone that wants to, to transition into that needs to have. And then when it comes to the technical expertise, it's obviously someone that has had um, real life experiences, whether that's through research or through like corporate experience of applying machine learning models and um, visualization and SQL. Like Excel, we kind of take as a given that most of the people that worked in the data space know how to navigate Excel, but it's part of what we do as well. So, but the most important parts because it's the, taking people through the journey of like getting to confidently apply a Python and machine learning models is a long journey and we need people to come with that experience and especially re like not just they've done data camp course or this and this is they um, need to be able to have the conversation of how that is applied in the business context and the challenges that they might face when they put a model into production, which is very different to just doing a couple of Kaggle competitions. And it's a, it's a different conversation. So that's mainly the profile. And um, we have also an alternative like alternative routes for people to join in the team, which is um, our digital academy. So for people that are not necessarily so um, experience or the lack of teaching or facilitating experience, we take them on a 90 day journey so they can train with us to then become coaches in our team. But they do have to have the fundamental technical knowledge to be able to embark on that journey. That is so interesting. I was going to say, Hank, are you sitting there being like, hmm, I have that, I have that, hmm, do I have that? I think we, <laughs> the, I love the idea that it's like the train the trainers camp. Like, I, I would really like to be in there just to see what it's like, see the people that you uh, you have, obviously, these super technical skills, but you're right, teaching or or sharing or trying to break down complex ideas is sometimes incredibly hard to do. Like. Um, I don't know about you with machine learning. Sometimes you go, oh, you say a word and you, you kind of know what it means. But to explain it out loud, you're like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what to say sort of things. So, yeah. um, that's really, really And it is the things like what? just using like word as model or algorithm. People don't necessarily know what it is. And you, you, you take it for granted. It's like, oh, we're going to do this model. And people go like, what, what is a model? <laughs> And it is fascinating because until you have to teach it, you never realize how fundamental things, how fundamental are fundamental things. So it's it's definitely a journey. Mm. Oh, I love that. That's, that's so interesting. And then the other question I had for you, because that is kind of as I was thinking about, right, those skill sets and stuff like that. Who are the types of people? Do you see patterns in the people that come and take your courses? Are they coming from specific backgrounds or actually is there a range? Like what are you kind of seeing out there? Yeah, it's a really good question because when people think about apprenticeships, they tend to think about young people coming out of like school that they don't necessarily want to go to university. And we definitely have quite a brought a pool of those young learners. But surprisingly, the majority of the population today are people already with, to certain level, established careers that they want to 
like take their skills a bit further and also digital transformation strategies are very um, top priority for most of businesses and there's a huge appetite for people to go on that journey and start being a bit more efficient with the use of data and tools in their jobs. So in terms of background, we see like we have from consultants to HR to like uh, people that work in government services, which like don't think of those roles as traditional data jobs. So the only prerequisite that they have to have is to have access to data. They have to have access to data to be able to do um, time series analysis, linear regression. So that is something that we work with clients to ensure that they do have. But outside of that, they just need to have the passion to learn and commitment to it because it's a long journey. They're with us for 18 months. So it's, it's quite a commitment in terms of their time and their kind of sticking with it, which is interesting because they all come with like a lot of enthusiasm but then like the understanding that is 18 months doing this and seeing them through the up and downs of like i can't do this oh this is great i can't do this oh this is fantastic it's like they go through that a lot it's Thank a marathon not a sprint day. comes to mind and uh, no it's um 20 percent of their time so if they are so if they are working full-time it's one day of their time dedicated to learning but that is in their own time and they are with us so one training session in a group setup a month and then one coaching session for an hour a month and then the rest of the time is them applying their learning into the workplace that is a good way i like that mm -hmm. so i think it's time for my big question Right. Yes, Amy? this one's it's like a famous question. Someone mentioned it on Twitter this morning. Hank, a real crowd asking this very difficult question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, what is the most annoying thing about your role in AI? The most annoying thing about my role? Um, that's a great question. I think uh, the barriers that I still see. And the conversations I have with a lot of my apprentices that remind me of conversations that I had when I was trying to start my journey into that. And it's the, it kind of the, the really makes it difficult for people to find the confidence that they need to step into that role. So people that have been in the like data space for some time and they consider themselves experts in data science or core data scientist teams that I uh, I can see still a lot of patterns to what I saw back in the day with like people being very like boundary based and like you don't have a qualification that is worth for me considering or you're just an apprentice or a lot of that stuff is quite still frustrating it's less common than it was i think and that's a big part of why i joined the team at multiverse is to try to like remove those boundaries for other people because like for like a lot of jobs or to do a lot of the things that we want to do in general with ai you don't need a phd in a lot of really complex stuff you just need to learn the tools and be able to apply those tools with confidence and knowing what those tools are there for and i still see quite some especially it's quite like um until they be they are able to prove themselves people don't give them the like benefit of oh this guy might be able to do really great things so yeah mm -hmm. it's that's kind of the annoying part still yeah, I always find that quite interesting when someone says like a, da a data scientist and then you're like, well, what, what makes you a data scientist? Like you said, is it a formal qualification that makes you a data scientist? Is it the fact that you've worked on projects? Is it both? Is it, um, you know, is it a certain type of project that suddenly makes you a data scientist? So yeah. uh, I, I understand that confidence piece. I think there is some um, some kind of gray area almost around that. 
But Marta, we've had such a good conversation. Um, as we've said to all of our guests, come and chat to us in the cafe uh, to find out even more um, rather, other than just on the show. But one of the things we wanted to do next, we did warn you, Marta, but honestly, it's going to be fine. We do our quick fire round. So our quick fire round is uh, six. We actually added a question. Um, six very, very short questions. And one of the things that we want you to do is we want you to answer the first thing that comes to your mind. And the reason we want the first thing is because every guest, interestingly, has had something slightly different to say, um, which tells its own story about the AI space, we believe. Um, so, Marta, are you ready? Yeah. Ready to go. Okay, so easy, easy one to start off with, easy one to start off with. Um, what was your first programming language? Fortran. No, that is a new one. <laughs> I'm old. I'm old. <laughs> what was the programming language you, you used in your last project? Python. Ah, interesting. There's a pattern there. Uh, what was the last thing you learned in AI? And if you can keep it to no more than one sentence. Ethics. Oh, good one. Favorite event on the AI calendar? Yes. Every session with my learners is my favorite event in my in my calendar. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, and what area of AI is on your list to skip next? I guess um, higher education learning in the space of AI, like how to bridge oh. that gap. Nice. In I love that. I love that. Yeah, the gap in knowledge, the project space side of it, what, what works, what doesn't, what helps people in industry. Wonderful. Uh, what training framework did you use last? Um, asynchronous learning. And I don't know whether this is a very educational side of the, the story, but when I think about training and education, it's always related to how people learn. So asynchronous learning. I love that. I love that because interestingly, most of the time when we say that someone's like PyTorch or TensorFlow and actually you've taken that perfectly and kind of said We lost you for a bit, Amy. Yeah. <laughs> it never takes two seconds. Apologies. I'm you're so back. sorry. You're back. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so sorry about that. Um, but that it was great timing, really. It was almost like the clock was telling me, Amy, it's time. Unfortunately, we do need to move on to closing our show just here. Um, Marta, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, it's always incredible what you're up to, where you've come from, and the things that you're sharing with other people and as we always say join us in the cafe afterwards uh, and we can ask a few more questions absolutely and it's a pleasure to be here and to get to see you amy and to meet you hank and thank you for the opportunity as well wonderful yes. all right we will see you shortly thank you can't believe that went by very fast i know i know always you start and then you're like oh we have time and then it is suddenly 20 minutes later um so let's close up our show in the last five minutes so i wanted to promote one event the global ai student conference the schedule is just announced where there are 16 microsoft student ambassadors that are going to speak on the 24th of april ranging from how to get started with um in the AI space all the way up to training the models on Azure. We have some panels about um, ethics in AI and how you can start learning. So it will be a great show and 
everything is available on aiconf.education and it is on Saturday 24th of April from 12 CAT until 6 PM CAT. And one other thing that was launched this week, which I think is worth mentioning, is the movie on Netflix, um, Coded Biases, or Bias, which I highly recommend that you take a watch. Oh, Over to you, Amy, like for the... Yeah, I will post, uh, post the link also on the website, because it's a good movie to see, especially when you work in the AI space. So Wonderful. I think it's time so, for uh, learn module. It is indeed, it is indeed. It's that part of the show just as we close up. Um, obviously, I, hopefully if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back to watch. Uh, if you're new to this show, our learn modules are based on Microsoft Learn learning resources. And um, I spend a few minutes a week and run it, um, kind of chat with Hank about our guests and actually what different modules relate to the job that they do, uh, just to show all of the do in this space. And so one of the things that um, I listed today is pure data science learning, because I feel like Marta was kind of saying that bridge into pure data science sometimes feels uh, a little bit high. And so one of the things I want to do is help everyone to just get some of that core learning. Um, so we have a few different modules. We have everything from exploring and analyzing data in Python to training and evaluating lots of different models. So you've got a regression module, a clustering module, classification, and then actually a small section onto deep learning models as well. They are often the most talked about part of AI, but there is a lot of classical kind of more um, traditional approaches to machine learning that's still incredibly important. And so if you go to aka.ms slash a bit of AI dash learn, uh, or you can, um, I believe it's just above us, this side, on the website as well, uh, you can get a link. Uh, and obviously all the links that we share in the show are available at a bit of AI dot show. So Hank, I think that's all from us today. It looks like my internet yes. connection just about held out. So there we go. A <laughs> um, few more glitches than we would prefer. But um, big thank you to all our viewers today for joining us. If you're new to the show, welcome. We hope you've enjoyed it. We hope it's been insightful. If you're returning, it's always great to have you back. And hopefully we've given you a different perspective of the AI space. We are for today, 10 a.m. CET, um, which is also in if you go to the website, you can actually see it in your time zone. So if you're joining us from other parts of the world. Our guest next week uh, is Jean-Pierre Réal, who is going to be joining us and talking about an even more different part of the AI space. So we're very excited to be chatting with him. Uh, do come and join us at the Bit of AI Cafe after the show. Uh, it's where you can chat with Marta, myself, Hank, and all of our other viewers uh, by going to aka.ms slash a bit of AI dash cafe. If you want to rewatch this episode and take in even more detail, go to a bit of AI show. And with that, uh, thank you so much for watching. Uh, this is the A Bit of AI show with Hank and Amy. Thanks for watching. See you next week. <laughs>